morning, everyone. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Amy and Ms. Chris for that wonderful introduction. I'm so excited to get to chat with you all this morning, uh, this evening, my time, um, about goal setting. This is something that is very important throughout your entire life, but you are in a special time right now uh, where you have a few years before you're making that decision about where to go to college or where to go to university. And there's lots of big questions that need to happen. But uh, I think a good place to start is I'm going to share a little bit about Ithaca College, the college that I work at. And so that way, while I'm talking about Ithaca, you can start thinking of questions in your head. Do I want a college that's similar to Ithaca? Do I maybe want to go to a place that offers different programs, is maybe in a different location? Good questions to start asking. So let's start talking about Ithaca College and what we have to offer. This is a beautiful um, picture of the landscape of Ithaca College. Uh, I am coming to you live from the building on the left side of the picture. So I'm looking out at the beautiful view of Cayuga Lake. We are a rural campus, which means we are not located in a city. Um, we're located in a beautiful natural area. There are lots of mountains. There's a lake. There are many waterfalls, which is one of my favorite things to talk about. It's very beautiful. Here are some numbers and a map of New York State so you can get an idea of where we are. Lots of times people hear New York and they think New York City. Ithaca is actually located four hours driving from New York City. We are Northwest in the middle part of New York State. All of those white squiggly lines that you see above uh, the star of Ithaca on the map are the called the Finger Lakes. They're supposed to look like fingers, I guess, like this if you could see my hand, right? These are all the different lakes. We are located at the end of Cayuga Lake, which is the longest of the Finger Lakes. Um, this area is known for beautiful scenery, um, lots of water sports, um, beautiful waterfalls and lots of really good food as well, <laughs> which is probably not what you'd expect. Um, Ithaca College is a mid-size institution, right? So we have small, middle, and large institutions. We have 5,000 students total, and the majority of our students are undergraduate students, meaning they are in their first four years of university study. So these are students directly out of secondary school um, that come and participate in undergraduate study here. About 400 of them will stay for another two years to do graduate work, but most students are undergraduate. And since we are so focused on undergraduate students, we like to give students hands-on experiences from their first day on campus. At Ithaca College, students do not have to wait until they are in their third or fourth year of study um, to participate in research, to get internships, to um, buy and trade stocks in our School of Business, to audition for main stage productions in our School of Music, Theater, and Dance to hold expensive camera equipment and make their own movies um, in our School of Communications, or to do any of the great things in our School of Humanities and Sciences and Health Sciences and Human Performance. We have students from 45 states, 50 countries, and four U.S. territories. About 3% of our student body population are international students. So that's another thing to think about. Um, if you are looking to study in the US, are you looking for a school that has a large uh, international student population or maybe a smaller, more intimate student body population? All good questions, but these are Ithaca College's numbers. 
Fun fact, Ithaca College was originally founded as a music conservatory, right? So we only taught music for the first few years. Um, of course, we have since expanded to offer 70 different programs across our five different schools. But this idea of theory, practice, and performance, which started from our foundation as a music conservatory, has been translated to all of the programs that we offer. We call this experiential learning. We want our students to really put their skills to the test as soon as possible. Some of the great ways that we do that are through the wonderful resources we have available to students. We have over 100 labs here on campus, ranging from our human anatomy lab, where students will work with um, human cadavers, uh, to our 3D printing lab, where students that are studying science and technology can print anything that they can imagine. Um, we have over 75 performing art spaces on campus. So these are main stages, um, black box theaters that can be changed into whatever scene um, the show calls for. These are practice rooms that are also equipped with sound recording technology. So lots of different spaces where students can make their own music or soundtracks for movies. Um, and also dance studios as well. We of course were founded as a music conservatory, so the performing arts play a huge role in what we do, but we had lots of other programs as well, including um, our School of Health Sciences and Human Performance, which use our four clinics on campus. So students can get real experience working with real life patients right here on campus. Um, we have the physical therapy clinic, the exercise science clinic, athletic training, and speech language pathology. So students are getting professional experience, again, working with real life patients um, during their time of undergraduate study with us. We have um, two studios in our School of Communication. This is the middle picture that are set up for Ithaca College Television or ICTV. This is the oldest and longest running student broadcast network. So our undergraduate students get to propose new show ideas every semester. Um, and they do all of the production themselves from, um, from writing the scripts to casting, to acting on camera, post-production and editing. They see the shows completely through, all student run. We also have two radio stations and two newspapers. So lots going on in our School of Communications. And then we also have a trading room in our School of Business where students can buy and sell stocks with real money uh, to get that real life experience, right? I'm sure you're already tired of me saying real world experience. That's what Ithaca College is all about. That's a look inside of our classrooms. But if we zoom out, this is what our campus looks like. Again, rural, maybe not what you think of when you think New York City. Um, this is the top of South Hill um, and lots of trees that you can see on campus. The bottom we have our Muller Pond, which is right near our non-denominational chapel, uh, excuse me, our Muller Chapel. Um, the top of the hill, we have our 500 acres of natural lands where Ithaca College students um, are conserving all of the natural beauty that surrounds us. For reference, it takes about 15 minutes to walk at a leisurely pace from the athletic and event center on the left side of the picture, the building with the silver steeple, to the fountains on the right side of the picture. We are a residential campus, which means most students live on campus with us. Um, something else to think about, right? When you're trying to decide which college or university is right for you. Would you like to live on campus or off campus somewhere else in the town? Ithaca College, most students live on campus. So everything is within a 15 minute walking um, radius for our students. They don't need to get into shuttle buses or cars to get around campus. Um, and everything that they need is right there. At athletic facilities, academic buildings, residential 
um, buildings, dining halls, beautiful waterways, um, hiking paths, you name it, it's available on our campus. These are a couple pictures about the greater Ithaca community. We do have over 200 clubs and organizations on campus. So our students are very involved on campus and within the greater Ithaca community. We are a number one college town uh, for the USA. So lots of young people pursuing higher education. There are wonderful festivals that happen in our area. Our downtown commons uh, is home to more restaurants per capita than New York City, so lots of yummy food to try. And of course, there's the natural beauty. We have over 150 waterfalls within a 10 mile or maybe 25 kilometer radius of campus. We can talk a little bit about the application process because these are important things to start thinking about in uh, your 10th grade year. Um, so how to make I see your future. We take a holistic approach to application review, which is a fancy way of saying we weigh everything that students submit to us equally, right? Um, we've been test optional since over a decade. Uh, so students do not need to submit test scores um, for SAT or ACT. Um, we do not have a GPA, that's if you are above this, uh, you can automatically get in, and if you are below, you automatically cannot get in. We really do look at everything that students submit, so we will read your personal essay to try to get to know you better as a person. We will read your letters of recommendation to see what your teachers and counselors and supporters have to say about you as a student and as a person. We will, of course, look at your transcripts as well because it's important to know that you are prepared for the level of coursework you will be asked to do here at Ithaca College. Um, but as a liberal arts institution, we are looking for well-rounded individuals. So we want to know what new perspectives are you going to bring to campus? What clubs and organizations will you get involved in here? Will you start a new club? Um, will you be uh, leading our athletic teams on the field or on the court? What else are you bringing to our residential campus? These are all things that are important to our community. We want to make sure that we are um, inviting students to join our campus community that are going to play a big role. We are looking for students that will stay involved and that will be on campus on the e uh, throughout the evenings and on the weekends. Um, and we're looking at studying abroad or um, participating in internships who are going to, after they graduate, come back to campus and provide workshops for our current students and really continue the legacy of Ithaca College. Now, that was Ithaca College. We will change gears a little to talk about how what I just shared uh, can help you start getting ideas um, for preparing for your own future, right? I'm sure there are some students watching who just saw all of the great things that I shared with you about Ithaca College and got very excited because maybe you are looking for a mid-sized rural residential campus that has lots going on every day of the year. Some of you may not be as excited and that's okay. We are going to talk about um, preparing for your future, how to set goals. We want to think about where do you want to go, right? Miss Amy shared the questions. People have been asking since you were five years old, what do you want to be when you grow up, right? Now it may seem a little more real as you start to get older, and we can ask this question, where do you want to go? There are future signs pointing in many different directions. Um, what we're gonna focus on today is how do you get there? What are some tools? What are some questions that we can start thinking about to get you to where you want to go? So, 
we're going back to the questions. Miss Amy started this presentation with questions and we are just going to continue asking questions. We have a similar, what do I want to be when I grow up? We've thought about that a little already. Now we can start focusing more on how do we make this a reality? What interests me? This is a very important question. Um, what are things that make you excited? This could be career oriented, but it could also be for clubs and organizations. What kind of books do I like to read? What kind of, um, where do I like to travel, right? When I ex go to a new city or a new location for the first time, do I gravitate towards the historical landmarks? Am I interested in visiting museums? Do I want to go to the newest building to admire the architecture, right? So what interests me? These are questions that you can ask yourself. And sometimes I understand um, that this could be a little overwhelming, right? I don't know, what does interest me? Well, if you feel like you don't know what interests you, a good place to start could be, what doesn't interest me? There are so many different career opportunities in the world. There are so many different programs, right? Ithaca College has 70 different programs that we offer, and we're a mid-size institution. There are schools that offer over 100 different programs. Some schools will offer maybe 50 programs. Still lots to choose from. So instead of picking one that interests you, you can start eliminating programs that don't interest you. If you have ever taken maybe a science class that you didn't enjoy, right? When you went to do your homework, you were like, oh, I'm not excited about this. Maybe that science is not for you. It doesn't interest you. And you can cross that off your list of possible careers or possible programs that you would like to study. Same thing for foreign language. If there's a language that you have taken that does not feel good for you, that doesn't interest you. And you don't have to continue to study that in college or in university. So my advice, when things seem a little too overwhelming in what interests you, start with things you know that don't interest you. It is just as important to learn what you don't like as it is to narrow down what you do like, right? Um, it's a lot easier as young people still in secondary school uh, to take classes and decide what you do and you don't like. In college, you can still switch your major oftentimes um, up until maybe your third or your fourth year. You can change your major if you decide that it's something that you don't like. But once you graduate and start a career, it's a little bit more difficult if you find that you don't like something that you've been training for, for four years or six years or 10 years. So it is just as important to start deciding what you don't like <laughs> than it is to focus on what you do like. Now, I want to see how awake we are. <laughs> um, I do have a question. How many higher education institutions are there in the United States? There are over 4,000 higher education institutions in the United States. That is a very high number. I, as an admission counselor, often have students worrying, especially this time of year, right? Students have to decide on May 1st where they'd like to go to college or university in the US. They're wondering, oh no, what if I make the wrong decision? What if I choose the college that is wrong for me? I like to say out of 4,000 institutions, there is not one wrong choice. There are many wrong choices, but there's also not one right choice. And I think that's important for students to recognize too. 
there are many institutions that will offer programs that you are interested in that can help you get internships and career opportunities that will offer classes that you would like to take and that you will be excited to join. Um, so it's important. There's not one wrong institution and there's not only one right institution. We are worried about something that is going to fit you. What is fit? When a school meets a student's needs, their non-negotiables and their wants, negotiables, academically, socially, and financially. These are three major categories, right? That we can start thinking about as well. How do I get to where I want to go academically? So this is a, pro, a school that's going to have the program that you were interested in, that's going to offer um, maybe the undergraduate and help to get to the graduate program that you're interested in if your career offers um, or requires a graduate level. Socially, we talked about how Ithaca College has over 200 clubs and organizations. Do you want to be a part of a specific club and organization and make sure that that university offers that club? Would you like to start your own club? Um, do you want to be part of a large campus community, a smaller campus community? What kind of class size would you like? These are all about socially and then financially. Where can you afford to go to school? Will you be taking out loans to afford your education? Do you need to think about an undergraduate education and a graduate education? Because that will be expensive as well. So all of these great things come into your fit. It's important to remember fit is different for everyone. And in order to find your right fit, you need to know yourself. So we will go right back to our questions that we've been talking about. What is the right fit for me? What do I hope to get out of a college or university experience? Preparation is the key to success. This is all about preparing for your future and finding your key to success. So we have more questions and things to think about. The number one thing that I talk to students in uh, 10th grade, so around your age about, is selecting appropriately challenging coursework. As um, admission counselors, we like to see that students have taken advantage of challenging courses that are offered at their institution. So this is um, A-level courses, right? Uh, for a lot of our international students. But appropriately challenging means that if you are taking very advanced courses and you are not prepared to be successful in those courses, that's not going to help you. That's not going to be your key to success. You need to decide where are my strengths. If I am a very skilled math student, right? I typically earn good grades in math. The concepts make sense in my head. Then you should challenge yourself in math courses. If you sometimes struggle in English, right? Maybe writing long papers is not your strength. You should take maybe an honors level um, English course or go for extra help in your English courses to make sure that you are challenging yourself, but also that you can be successful. It is a difficult balance. This can be um, oftentimes students and supporters uh, make will think that admission counselors want to see that you have taken all of the hardest classes that your um, secondary school offers, every single one of them. But if you are not able to be successful in those courses, if you are not then able to hang out with your friends, if you're not then able to read for fun, if you're not able to travel or 
spend time with your siblings or your family members, that is maybe not the best choice for you, right? We like to see, as I've mentioned, the holistic um, application review, that you are a whole person. I joke that we know our students are not study robots. They are real people. They need social interaction. They need exercise. They need to get outside and have a life outside of school. So we wanna see that you are taking courses that are challenging where you can still be successful. It's a hard balance to find. I'm sure uh, your counselors, Ms. Amy, will be helpful in guiding you along the right path to take courses where um, you are challenging yourself, but you are still able to achieve good grades um, and learn and understand the material so that you can be successful in college or university. Going along with this, right? We need to make sure that we are choosing appropriately challenging coursework so we can experience new things, read new books, try new recipes. If you want to cook with maybe an older family member, if they're the cook in your family, um, there are lots of great classes and um, skills that you can learn through YouTube or through free resources on the internet take advantage try to learn a new language even sometimes you know we have um students that are very active in gaming communities and so they have friends from all over the world and they're able to ask questions about what's it like in your country or how was your day today um at at this school or in this different environment so experiencing new things and then reflecting on those things right Sometimes I'll read college essays where the students list all of the great things that they have done. I've played piano for 10 years. I have read 300 books. I have visited 10 different countries, right? But there's no depth. They haven't said, this is what I've learned from reading 300 books, or this is how I am um, studying piano for 15 years has taught me to be a better listener because i had to listen to my teacher or i had to um listen to the nuances in the music right reflection especially self-reflection is very important it's a difficult skill to learn and so all these questions that we've been talking about as you experience new things ask yourself what did i like about this new thing what did I not like about this new thing? Is this new experience something that I would like to try again? Would I like to um, bring my friends with me next time that I experience this new thing? These are um, great ways for us to grow as people. Also, it's very helpful when we start thinking about what to write our personal essay on. If you have not experienced anything, what are you going to write your college essay about? What are you going to teach me about you? So it's important that we have time outside of our coursework to experience new things. Join a new club. Um, talk to a student from a different background, right? Someone that you don't usually hang out with. All important things. One of the great things um, or I guess one of the positive things to come out of the last few years is that many colleges and universities offer virtual programming. So it's amazing if we can visit um, new countries and visit colleges and universities in person, right? Because I showed you some beautiful pictures of Ithaca College, but I promise it's even more breathtaking in person when you get to experience the sunset over the lake, right? or you get to watch as the clouds roll in over the hills. But you can get great experiences through virtual programs. So at the end of this presentation, I will share Ithaca College's virtual visit link, but every single college and university across the United States offers virtual programs. So you can talk with current students, you can, um, get a virtual tour of what the campus is like or maybe the residence halls visiting in whatever capacity will help you start to understand 
what you like in colleges and universities, and again, what you don't like. Um, you might see pictures or take a virtual tour of a university and be like, this is way too big. I'm not interested in a campus where I have to get into a bus to go from my dorm to my class. I want to be able to walk, right? Visiting can help you decide these things. Do I want to visit and, and see the stadium where 60,000 people can sit and watch an American football game? Maybe you're looking for a bigger school. Um, do I want to visit a campus that's right in the middle of a city? And so I have to take the train to get from one of my classes to another class across the city. Maybe you're looking for a more urban campus. Visiting can help you try on that college for size, right? Like when you go uh, clothes shopping, you always try on your clothes. Visiting either in person or virtually is a great way to try on that college, see how it feels. Talk to the students because they're the ones who will be your classmates for the next four years, six years, eight years, however long you'll be there. Um, visiting is one of, I think, the best things that you can do to start deciding where you'd like to be um, and what programs or what is important to you, your non-negotiables when it comes to college searching. Finally, the whole theme of this presentation has been ask questions. Ask questions to yourself, ask questions to me, <laughs> ask questions to current students at colleges and universities. They're very willing. Um, they love to talk about their experience and to share their advice and to, um, to get to know you and to try and help you along the way. I like to give presentations like this to let students know that admission counselors are not scary people. At least I like to think I'm not a scary person. Um, I'm here to help you and to answer your questions, um, maybe to ask some questions about you, right? To get to know you better. Um, but all in all, admission counselors want you to find a good fit, right? Ithaca College might be a great fit for you. It might not be a good fit and that's okay. But the only way to know is to ask questions. So, in order to keep the conversation going, I'm sharing uh, some contact information for myself and for Ithaca College. We are on TikTok. I do like to be in TikTok videos, so you might see me there. Um, and we're also on Instagram as well. So if you'd like to stay in touch, follow us. You can ask questions. We also have our visit link here. Um, I talked about how important it is to visit in person or virtually, whatever you are able to do. Um, and these are some great ways to do that. It can be successful.